Hello, musky huskies and malodorous malamutes. Riv here, and this week we're going to talk about what happened to the poppy furs. Some of you may be like, wait, didn't you make a video earlier this year about how the whole poppy fur thing was a myth and it was ridiculous and these people weren't really celebrities? This is true, but I am going to use the term poppy fur in this video just because people understand what I'm talking about and who I'm talking about. By poppy furs, I'm generally talking about content creators who started typically on YouTube around 2015 to 2017, kind of the golden era of furry YouTube. They got super popular super fast, beyond even their own expectations, and kind of became these larger-than-life celebrities inside of the fandom. Recently, a lot of these content creators have slowed down on YouTube and other social media, and they've been noticeably absent from conventions. So what the heck happened? And is the Poppy Fur era coming to an end? This era, if it is indeed an era, kind of hit its peak around 2018 in my opinion. MFF 2018 was the most ridiculous example of this massive celebrity status that I've ever seen. 2018 was the year that Bakari Roo attended MFF and Majira of course was also there because he was going to like probably 15 cons a year back then. There was this unofficial YouTuber meet and greet that happened in the fishbowl, which is off of the main part of the hotel where some of the panel rooms are. All these people were in there waiting to meet Majira and Pokari, and they sort of like magically popped out of these panel room doors, kind of like Mickey Mouse and Goofy at Disney World or something, just appearing out of nowhere. They were immediately mobbed by hundreds of people. They were just pressed back against these doors with this huge crowd around them trying to get pictures and stuff, and this went on for like an hour. Pokari seemed to be dealing with it pretty well, but you could tell even through the fursuit, just from the subtle body language, that Majira was not really enjoying it. Finally, convention security had to break the whole thing up because it was a violation of fire code. So this was happening with these big furry YouTubers at every con they went to. Although usually to a lesser extent than that example at MFF, they were still getting mobbed with people who wanted to take pictures of them. Now, as the years kind of ticked by, 2019, 2020, I started noticing Majira, who was still showing up at a lot of cons, was um, often not Majira. Somebody would be walking around in his old suit, or somebody would be even in his new suit, like eight inches shorter than him, and it was really obvious because the legs were like all crumpled up. I think some of them were kind of starting to get burned out by then and were choosing to lay low and not really make as many appearances. The YouTube content was still going strong at that point, though. Fast forward a couple more years, a lot of these content creators have really fallen off in terms of YouTube and the other stuff that they were doing to entertain people. So what's going on? Some people may be like, well, it's just YouTube isn't the favored platform in the furry fandom anymore and people are going over to TikTok and eh, there's some truth to that, but that's not the entirety of what's going on here. So what is going on? The first thing is burnout. If you're doing this kind of content week after week after week for years and years and years and years and years, eventually you just run out of stuff to say. You run out of topics to talk about. You have to start recycling stuff or you just get tired of it. Now, I'm nowhere near that point. I can see this channel going on for years to come, but a lot of people are going to get to that point. Some people just want to do something fresh. They want to get out of fursuit. They want to move to another platform like Twitch and start streaming. It's just natural that eventually you're going to come to the end of that part of your creativity and want to move on. And that's what happened with a lot of them, I think. The other big thing is life just getting in the way. Now, a lot of these creators were in their late teens, early 20s, up to around mid 20s when they started out. So they've graduated from college now. They're out there looking for jobs. And that's not necessarily compatible with making full-time furry content. There are very few people who can make a living year after year after year as a professional furry entertainer. For most people, that's probably not really a valid long-term career goal. Some people have the business sense to do it, like Odin Wolf. I think he could keep going indefinitely doing it professionally just because he's good at it. He understands the business part of it and how to make money and how to diversify. So I think maybe he's the exception, but a lot of these people realize that they're just not going to make a living forever doing furry content, and it was time to move on to something else. And let me tell you, having a full-time job and doing this also is really difficult. I have to give up an entire day off between concept, scripting, filming, editing audio, editing video. It can be really exhausting and take up a lot of your time off to make a video every week. These things don't just happen in 10 minutes. 
I know this is what happened with several of them, including Pokari, who decided to get a full-time job and just didn't really have time to do the YouTube thing anymore. It's not that profitable. YouTube itself doesn't pay really anything. You have to make money off of Patreon and merch sales and stuff like that, and it's not easy to do. It's not easy to make a genuine living doing this kind of thing. The other thing that happened is they just grew as people. I mean, like I said, a lot of these people were very young when they started. And as they've grown, they've changed and their interests and their desires have changed and what they want to do in terms of putting themselves out there on social media has changed. Nas Hyena just did a great video on this topic talking about his personal journey and I encourage all of you to watch it. I'll put a link in the description. People move on. Sometimes people lose interest in the fandom. Some people get to the point where they're worried about their professional reputation and they don't necessarily want it to be connected with the furry fandom. I totally get that. I keep my personal life and my furry life totally separate. Regardless of the reason, people just run out of time to make this sort of content, and I think that's what's happened with a lot of the so-called poppy furs. So is all of this a good thing or a bad thing? While it sucks to see some of the people go away that I had been watching for years and kind of introduced me to the fandom, well, everything evolves over time. And the good thing about this is that it's allowing some smaller YouTubers to kind of make a name for themselves without having these giant channels out there just towering over everybody else. It's also kind of cool to see other people getting attention at furry conventions. The Poppy Fur group was notably absent at MFF 2022, as they were in 2019, and probably 2021 as well, although I don't remember. I thought it was kind of refreshing and cool to see Cooper Tom getting a lot of attention, who is just like an old-school furry who's been around for decades. He was kind of the celebrity of MFF. So change isn't necessarily a bad thing, as long as the people that we're talking about have moved on to something that they're happier with, hey, that's great. So the big question is, after discussing all this, are there just going to be new poppy furs? Are other people going to come up and take their place? I personally don't think we're going to see this mega celebrity phenomenon anymore in the fandom. There's always going to be popular people. There's always going to be people that you want to get your picture taken with at a convention or whose social media or whose content you like. But I think the poppy fur era may be over. The era of furry content creators being elevated to this massive, almost comical celebrity status, in my opinion, is probably over. So, what do you think about all this? Do you think we're going to see a new generation of poppy furs coming up out of either YouTube or TikTok or wherever else? Or do you think the whole phenomenon is kind of over with? Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? While it's kind of sad to see less regular content coming from some of the people I first watched when I came into the fandom, it also might be a good thing where channels like mine have a little bit of a better shot. Before we go, thank you, as always, to our super amazing, incredible, moist, delicious patrons. You are awesome, and you help keep this channel going and growing. Thank you so much, and if you would like to become one of those many words I use to describe my patrons, Check the link in the description. All right, thanks everybody for tuning in. We will be back next week with more Fuzzalicious content. You stay safe and stay fuzzy.